trying to be more mindful of kind of thinking about the celebration and being like this should be like a good time to boost indigenous voices in Canada so I'm gonna put some links below for that um, because Canada the British stole this land from indigenous people and then the ancestors of the British that were then Canadian were like yay independence from Britain and like I guess that's what we're celebrating <laughs> but yeah they gloss over the whole stole the land originally from the indigenous people thing anyway so it's Canada Day it is also um the start of Camp NaNoWriMo I'm not participating in camp because I can't trust myself to not be ridiculous. And so it's better for me to save all that energy for NaNoWriMo than to participate in camp. But I'm still like participating in camp peripherally. Like there's gonna be a ton of new live, different live streams that I'm gonna be participating in. I'm actually hosting my first live stream with um, By The Brook, um, who I will link below also, but we're gonna be doing a live stream on the weekend on Sunday as part of the 13 hour Camp NaNoWriMo live stream relay that Jessica Williamson, also links below, organized. So I am like participating in camp events, even if I myself am not participating in camp. Um, I guess I could make like a really loose goal, but again, like my goals are like so stretch and so weird. So I'm working this month, I'm working on revising my young adult horror. It's a haunted, call, calling it hashtag haunted house book. And that I'm probably gonna be done revising by the 19th of July, maybe even earlier. Um, so it's not quite a camp goal because I'll finish way earlier than camp is done. And then I'll also be working on drafting my sequel. Um, my debut Blood Like Magic has a sequel, has a second book, and I'm working on drafting that. I'm about 50,000 words in of a 100,000 word goal. And so I'm giving myself like a go daily goal, goal of a thousand words to finish that, but I'm not actually gonna be done by the time camp ends. So the projects that I'm working on are also not suitable for doing Camp NaNoWriMo because of the way I have my goals set up. And I know if I make drafting my sequel like a nano, like finish by the end of the month, it'll be wild because then suddenly I'll be forcing myself to do like huge word counts to get it done. And I just like don't wanna do that. I don't wanna put that energy on myself. And so today, Kate Cap Kavanaugh is doing a six hour live stream. I would like to participate in the full six hours. Let's see if I do this, but I would like to participate in the full six hours and I have made goals for myself. So I want to, for my horror, I want to be halfway through my revisions. Um, this is all like throwing my other schedule out the window because I'm now doing this six hour thing, but I want to be halfway done my revisions and I want to do 5,000 words for the day on my sequel. So those are my lofty goals for this six hour. Um, so yeah, either I'll stay for the whole six hours and we'll see what I do or I'll just like, I guess, stop when I hit those goals. I don't know, I'll see how I feel. I've never done writing sprints for this long. So I'm gonna be participating in that today. So I'll update you, I guess, at the end of the day or during or something, you'll see. to the stream um this is possibly your fourth hour at this <laughs> i know um, i was feeling interested i was like i wonder how many people are going to be doing this all day with every yeah. friends and stuff we'll have to see how that goes yeah exactly because i was like i gotta start from my sprint or i'm gonna run out of steam way too long <laughs> and then someone was like our cache are you gonna do all of them I don't know if I'm gonna do all of them, y'all. Let me just be honest. That's 13 straight or 12 straight hours. I'm gonna have to eat somewhere in there. There's no like breaks or nothing. Y'all gonna either see me eating on screen if I don't. So I have to figure something out. Yeah, pace yourself. Give yourself time. Okay. I'm sure I'll end up rewatching a bunch of them too. Um, but yeah, welcome to the stream. Look who it is. <laughs> So
So I'm like a week <laughs> into July and I figured I should do an update. So on Kate's six hour, uh, live stream thing, I did not do the whole six hours. I did like three and then I got so tired and I yeeted right out. And I still basically just got my dailies done. <laughs> I'm finding that's what's happening to me is that it seems like no matter how long the stream is, I still pretty much just get my daily word count and my two chapter revision goal done. And then I immediately become exhausted and like can't do anything else. Sometimes I do go a little bit over, like I'll get 1600 words instead of a thousand. But for the most part, I pretty much do like my base amount and then I expire, um, which is pretty much what I did. Um, when we did the Camp Nano live stream relay, uh, Jessica Williamson set that up. It was super, super fun. It was awesome. It was my very first time hosting a live, um, which was kind of nerve wracking. I think what made it especially nerve wracking was then I got into it and it said like 300 people were watching and I was like, excuse me, sir. What? <laughs> Cause I hadn't anticipated that many people. And so it was like, a lot of comments and stuff, but it was good. Um, Brooke and Cache were both there co-hosting with me, which was really awesome. Cache was like the warrior of the live stream. She was in every live stream. She spent the whole time. She got her 5,000 words for the day done. Um, she's super awesome. I'm actually going to be doing a video collab with her soon, but Anyway, that's the live stream went well, but again, I basically did like my dailies, which I'm fine with. I don't really feel like I need to hugely go over it. Um, though that being said, Cache is hosting, I think it's, is it this weekend or next weekend? One of the weekend, one of these Sundays, she's doing a 10K Sunday. So, you know, trying to write 10,000 words in a day. And I am going to try. She's convinced me to try. I don't think I'll do it, but I am going to make an attempt at that. Um, I recently passed, uh, what was it? It's like 60,000 words on my sequel manuscript. It's going well. I'm not having, I'm having like a weird second book syndrome. So I think a lot of people with their second book syndrome, they seem to be having trouble actually like writing it and getting the words down. And that's not my issue. I'm not having any trouble writing anything. I have everything planned. I'm like mostly basically following my plan. I think my syndrome is constantly thinking about whether I'm really upping the stakes for my first book and if I'm really pushing the envelope. But then I tell myself for Blood Like Magic, it took me until like, what I want to say, like my first major revision I had done with Christy, um, who, who is my agent, like it took me until then to be like, oh, this is good. Like, this is really good. Like, adding in those subplots had added this huge other layer to my book that I felt had made it so much better and so much more dynamic and interesting than it had been when I first written it. And so it took, like, basically, like, eight months to get to that point with my book. And so I'm trying to tell myself that, I'm not going to like get everything perfect right away. I'm not going to like automatically think of this thing that makes the book really dynamic and interesting. These are things that I kind of had to add on later. I think it already has some of that in it because I'm starting with subplots because I know what subplots are now. But I think there's still a way to go to get that secret sauce in it. But again, I'm kind of ignoring that and focusing on just finishing the draft because with me... I really just need to finish the draft and then I can edit things and I can make everything pretty later, but I can't get distracted by trying to fix things while I'm already drafting because otherwise I will never finish anything. And so that's kind of <laughs> the point that I'm at now with the sequel drafting. Conversely, with my horror, it's going swimmingly. Um, it is my lovely pet. I don't like... I think it's wonderful. I can't wait for my agent to read it. The other day, like, not even the other day, this morning, this morning I woke up and I was like, I can't wait to go on sub. I can't wait to go on sub with this, which I'm sure the second I'm on submission, which is like when your agent submits your manuscript to publishers, I'm sure the second I'm on submission, I'll be like, oh, this is horrible. I can't believe I was looking forward to this. But I have a lot of faith in this horror. I feel like it's really good. And so I'm really excited to 
finish editing and being able to finally send it to my agent who hasn't even gotten to see it yet. Uh, and I finished writing this in November. Um, so I'll be able to send it to her and we'll be able to work on it together and get it to that submission level. And I think that'll be really exciting for me. So that's kind of the week update. I got to edit some videos and then I got to do my writing. I have just started to do something new. It's a bit of an experiment, I guess, that I'm working on now. And I guess if it works out for me, maybe I'll make a separate video about it, but maybe I won't. We'll see how I feel. But I read Chris Fox's, it's like a book and it's called, um, like, I can't remember, but it's basically like how to write like 5,000 words in a day, which I, as someone who was drawn in by clickbait, was like, oh, okay, because I was looking for different writing craft books that I could read that I could help to kind of hone my craft. Um, I've been having a bit of an issue reading fiction books suddenly, so I figured craft books would probably be a good swap over so that I can keep reading. And so... Basically, his tenet is like you do these sprints and you plan out exactly what you're going to write right before and then you do the sprints. And when you do the sprints, you are supposed to be hyper, hyper focused and you track everything. So you track how well you're doing each day to help you basically mark your progress. And he has this whole spreadsheet he gives you. The ebook was like, a dollar forty-one for me, which makes me think that it's probably ninety-nine cents US. But so I did my very first like micro sprint, he calls them today. So it was a five-minute sprint. And in the five minutes, um, like basically following his tenant. So even though I plot out my books, I am kind of a planter. So I have the major plot beats pan planned out, and I did have a synopsis, though I've deviated from it so much. And so I've been kind of just kind of planning out stuff kind of on the fly and like continuously looking back. And he was just like, write what you're actually gonna write <laughs> for the day. Like plan out the scenes. Um contingent on how many words that you are planning to get that day and like really plan out the scenes and really know what you're going to write before you even go into it. Um, because lately I've been like writing and then I kind of look at my thing and think about it. And then I go back to writing and I look at it. And think. So he's like hyper focus is the key of this. And so I did a five minute sprint and I wrote 323 words. Um, so he has you doing like your words per hour. So on that, based on that rate, in an hour, I could potentially be writing almost 4,000 words based on that speed. So <laughs> I'm very intrigued by this process. So to start, he says, like, basically do like these five minute sprints, um, like do one a day for a week and then go up to 10 minutes and then go up to 15 minutes and then 20. And then eventually you're supposed to do two 30 minute sprints. So 30 minute sprint and then 10 minute break and then 30 minute sprint. And in that hour of the 30 minute sprints, you're supposed to be able to get 5,000 words written. I don't think I would get that many <laughs> words written. I don't know, but I just kind of wanted to be able to up my speed a little bit more and kind of just do better on that daily words. I've been doing the thousand words a day for a while and it's not that I have like, oh my God, I've got to get more all the time. I just think it would be nice to improve my writing speed because I feel like I'm spending a lot of time kind of just like, nah. and so this was really good. This was really good because I focused in, it was five minutes um, it actually didn't seem that fast. <laughs> it felt a little bit lengthy, even though it was five minutes. But I got, like, I usually, in like a 20-minute sprint, I'll get 500 words. And this was five minutes, and I got nearly that amount just by, like, doing what he said and, like, planning out my stuff properly of what I'm actually going to be writing in this scene. And in focusing in and focusing very purely on it. And so, you know what? I'm like... I feel like Chris Fox has something to say. Today is 
is 10K Sunday. This is being organized by Cache. I'll link her video below and I'll also link the playlist to the whole 10K Sunday in case you want to watch it some other day and do it. But I am going to participate. Previously, I've been like, whew, not I, 10K in a day, no thank you. But I have been like feeling more like doing it. And so I am participating today. And previously I was also like wishy-washy about it. Like eh, maybe I'll try for 5K. But today I'm making it a really hard goal to try and get the 10K. I think especially now that I've done these like speed writing techniques, like right now in 20 minutes, I can write a thousand words. So I feel like though that's like the only thing I do for the day. So maybe my energy level is different, but potentially in three hours worth of sprints, I should be able to write 10,000 words, um, which I assume will be like six hours of actually watching content. So it's starting in like probably like five minutes or two minutes, maybe even sooner by the time I've set all this up. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try and do that today and I will give you some updates to let you know how that's going for me. I'm not going to lie. I'm killing it. I'm killing it. <laughs> So the first stream just finished. So that was the first two hours of streaming. I don't know how many hours of like sprinting we ended up doing in between that, but like there was like a lot of sprints. Um, so my final word count after that is 3,846 words. So nearly 4,000 words. So I'm like very nearly almost halfway in the first couple hours. So I'm feeling really good about achieving this 10k I did it <laughs> I am the most shocked I'm really really shocked um I hit 10,000 words I'm at 10,056 words um I finished the second act of the sequel so the second act is done it actually ended up being a lot shorter than I expected it was going to be I ended up chopping out a bunch of chapters so I'm now on act three and already have some words in act three so for one i think i'm going to be done this sequel a lot sooner than i expected to because i did 10 days of work in one and yeah it's pretty wild i'm like really grateful to cache and everyone i'm going to put that link below by the way and i'll like link to all the people that were hosting and stuff like super grateful <laughs> to all of those people because uh, I got this done. I really, really did not think I would do this. Whenever people are like, I'm going to do a 10K day, I'm like, oh, not me. Um, but I did it. <laughs> and I think a really big testament to doing it also was reading that book. So uh, it's called 5,000 words in an hour. I, sometimes I think I say in a day. It's 5,000 words in an hour and it's by Chris Fox, who apparently also has a YouTube channel. I'll link him on all that stuff below. And it just changed the game. Like now, especially like when doing these sprints, I can see it. But consistently, I will write a thousand words in 20 minutes now. Like that's my rate. In 20 minutes, I write a thousand words. And that's just like the baseline. <laughs> for me now and it's funny because I don't actually even really feel that tired I really want to take a break I'm gonna take the rest of the day off and just like watch Katakyo Hitman Reborn and that sort of thing but I don't even feel that tired because it's still like the same amount of time it's just that I'm getting more done in that time period and it's really a great book <laughs> Like, I highly recommend it's like a dollar I think to buy it and I think if you sign up for his newsletter you get it for free but anyway it's really really simple tips but it just really shifted the focus in my mind I think I had gotten to this point where wherever I sat down to write in a sprint I was kind of like lackadaisical about it and kind of just like wafting off in my head and I think after reading his book I really focus really hard and I focus on getting my words on I'm getting as many words as possible and like doing that as quickly as possible and really flowing and also really thinking about knowing what I'm going to do before I go into it anyway read his book I think it's great um it really just shifted something in my head and I finally just got it and um before I used to write 500 words in 20 minutes so I literally doubled the rate at which I write and
finished my horror edits. I actually finished yesterday, but my boyfriend around, was around and I don't like filming when he's here. He doesn't do anything. It's just like my own self-consciousness. I don't want someone else to watch me film who isn't like involved in the filming. So anyway, I waited until he was gone. <laughs> And now I'm getting to say it. it's good. I'm really excited about being done revisions. I sent it off to my agent. Um, in case anyone's curious about how I like send new projects off to my agent, she's already seen an earlier pitch letter. And so I just revise the pitch letter and I send that to her along with the full manuscript. Um, I just send that because I think it, I don't know. I think it provides context and I like if she has the context and I think maybe it can help give her ideas of how she would want to pitch it for sub and that sort of thing. But anyway, this is going to be her first time reading it. Uh, hopefully she doesn't hate it. I don't think she will <laughs> because she knows the whole concept from the pitch letter and it's a lot of like family drama, which is what she liked about Blood Like Magic. And quite honestly, like I've shown her four projects since I've signed with her and she's liked them all. So I'm not that worried anymore now that we've built up that relationship. I'm like, kind of feel like you just like whatever I write. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. And so that's off to her. So now all I have left is to finish drafting my sequel, which I should be done by the end of this week. And other exciting news. So I kind of have come to the realization that I'm probably going to be here for the rest of the year, which is like still another like six months or something. Um, Cause you know, that just kind of seems to be the state of the world. And I suspect that even if I got a job that I would probably still be working from home until the end of the year anyway. So given that we have a second bedroom, um, we have the bed leaned up against the wall. It's basically like a multi-purpose storage room. And so the project that I've set for myself is to turn it into an office slash pantry. <laughs> um, so it'll like have some pantry stuff because we need more pantry space for our food stuffs. But I'll also have like a big portion of it as an office space. So I bought a bunch of stuff from Ikea. Sometimes I feel like... <laughs> I'm making these vlogs and I'm like, I bought this and I bought like an iPad. And I ever wonder if people are like, are, isn't she unemployed? Yes, I am. I just like this. Um, but anyway, I really like I spend basically half my day at my desk. And right now the setup I have is like, it was working, but I'm like, it's getting very tiresome for me because I don't have enough space for everything. So I like have my computer my computer and my monitor but like if I want to paint then I gotta like move all this stuff around and if I want to use my sewing machine I have to move all this stuff around and it just feels so cluttered and originally I put my desk in the living room because my boyfriend did say you know you want to put in the second bedroom and I was like no because I wanted to see the tv because I was convinced that I would be spending most of my time doing something at the computer but also watching the tv but that's not at all what I do half the time I'm just watching a video on one screen and I'm doing whatever on the other screen and so it's kind of like started to defeat the purpose and it's become a little inconvenient um for my poor boyfriend <laughs> because I'll be doing live streams or something like that and he's like our kitchen is attached to our living room so then he like can't come into the kitchen because that people would hear the sound and then he's like relegated he's to the bedroom and it's just becoming a lot so I think it'll be much better for me to be in that room and it'll be really good because I can decorate it and I can make it look really nice I'm so tired of like having the backdrop of my window with all the like clutter shit on it I'm really excited to have like a dedicated room and so that Ikea shipment isn't coming till like August 12th or something like that so it's not gonna be until August but like that's better than like just doing this for the rest of the year so that'll be really exciting and I'll be excited I'm gonna include that as part of a vlog before I did like a dedicated video about setting up my space and I just think it's like it doesn't need its own video it'll just be part of a vlog so look forward to that in August in fantasy but that don't relate to contemporary experiences um so someone was saying that they're working on a fantasy story and they have diverse characters but it's not set on earth and so how do you feel about that and Lizelle, I see your hand. I have many thoughts about this. Um, I think a lot of my thoughts are based on readership. 
So even if you are in a complete fantasy world, even if you are a complete sci-fi world, real people in the real world will be reading your books. And so I've read lots of fantasy and sci-fi that are in worlds that like supposedly have no racism, but then like the black character is killed right off the bat or they're the best friend and their entire arc is about helping the white main character succeed or they like have a character that's like a weird like animal alien, but they've got black skin weirdly and they talk in a way that's like, stylized (laughs) and so I think the idea that you can separate the real life experience because it's in a fantasy world or in a sci-fi world is like a fallacy because real people are going to be reading it and like Marissa mentioned before like your biases can still come out in the narrative and so I think it's still really important to think about that when you're writing um, because it does come across and readers will notice like in Lord of the Rings, you know those orcs. You kind of notice when something is a representation of you and your culture, even if it's in something that is supposed to be separated and pulled apart from those experiences. Update. I'm, I'm actually not as sweaty anymore. I did some exercise. So I was sweaty when I started this video and I'm not sweaty now. So there you go. So updates. Um, I talked about finishing my horror and sending that off. I am also now done drafting my sequel. It's really exciting. I finished like a month ahead of what I planned and I owe that quite honestly entirely to 5,000 Words an Hour, the book by Chris Fox that taught me how to write faster and Cache Warren hosting (laughs) and all the other author tubers that participated in 10K Sunday because doing 10,000 words um, in a day really pumped things up. So that was really good. I'm really happy to be done my sequel. And something interesting, it's kind of an interesting thing because now I write so much faster. I average a thousand words in 20 minutes. So it's interesting in streams because it's kind of like, I feel like people are of two minds. They're like, oh yeah, cool. Like writing faster, that's awesome. And I think some people are like, well, if you're writing faster, aren't you losing quality? And Chris addresses this in his book. But to me, I'm not. Because I have everything so plotted out, I'm essentially just following all my plotting points. I'm just writing it faster. And when I write my first drafts, I tend to write pretty much entirely dialogue with very little description, whether I write it fast or whether I write it slow. That's just the way that I write my first drafts. And so I haven't missed out on anything. So my first drafts are crap and they're crap, whether I write them fast or I write them slow. So that's pretty much the difference with it. Um, And I don't know, I guess we'll see how long it takes me to revise. I think it's probably going to take a month to revise, which is usually a month or like two to three weeks is usually how long it takes me to revise a book, no matter what. I think it's going to take a similar amount of time, even if I've written this faster. So that's kind of like my two cents on writing faster. I think if you're a pantser, then it's a, I don't know, that's a completely different thing. I don't understand pantsing. So I can't comment on that. But for me, and like when you're following like Chris Fox's method, you are writing something that's planned out very well. And so even though you're writing faster, you're not necessarily losing quality on it. So that's how I feel about me writing faster. (laughs) And also, what else did I do on the weekend? Oh, I'm going to make a whole video about my experience of drafting a sequel and like lessons I learned from that. I don't know if it's going to be out by the time this video is out, but I am going to make a separate debut diaries video all about that. If you want to hear more about that experience. Also, um, the Evergreen Writing Oasis retreat was this weekend as well. And so I participated on, in that. I was in a diversity in writing panel. That was really good. Um, I was really excited about like the, like how it sounds silly to say, but how diverse the panel was. Cause sometimes people do diversity panels and there are what feels like people missing. Like there's not necessarily a lot of intersectionality or they don't have any disabled writers included. And so that was really great about this panel. Um, it felt like there was like a very good mix. 
And I was excited because I also got to talk about some things that I didn't talk about in my video where I discussed my second book and how it was problematic and my whole experience with that because that video was very much about my experience. And I think in the panel, we all got to talk a bit more about the state of diversity and writing more in general beyond just our own work, but also like what we observe in other works, etc. And I thought that was really, really awesome. I highly recommend checking that out. I'm going to link it. And then I also on Sunday, I was on Laura Wright's channel. I'm going to link her below. I was with her and Kevin for the craft writing craft craft writing book club, something in that order <laughs> to discuss deep scenes. So check that out too. But that was really fun. I always have fun like chatting with Kevin and Laura. So that was really good. I was a little bit nervous because it was a book club. So I was like had all my little notes and then I didn't end up looking at them at all. I really just remembered what I felt. So that was really good. This is my new journal. So I thought I'd do a little voiceover just to show you what I've got working over here. This is like a traveler's journal dupe that I got off of Amazon. There's a pocket here where I keep all of my sticker sheets that I've ordered. I have a lot of sticker sheets now. <laughs> and this is the title page. I just put like one single sticker. I like the minimalism. And then here's like the journal pages. I just kind of write whatever I feel like. It's really just more of like an art practice for me than like a writing thing. And yeah, just a way to be creative for me. I haven't filled out that many pages. And then I have this little pocket in the back where I keep some loose stickers. And that's my journal. not the end of the month but it is the end of the vlog <laughs> uh i just wanted to check in i finished my week off which was really nice i didn't really read though i was supposed to read um i started the year of the witching by alexis henderson which is really good i actually usually hate prologues and her book has a prologue and i was like yes this is perfect this is what prologue should actually be um so i'll link that all below and i highly recommend checking her book out but i didn't get to finish it i like read another like scary story out of um the uh slasher girls and monster boys anthology and that was really good um but i didn't do that much reading i don't know sorry <laughs> and i started watching uh channel zero which is like it's this really cool it's like very black mirror but it's specifically more horror focused and essentially every season is its own self-contained story so it's a little bit like american horror story in that way but not with a repeating cast and also like they're like mini series so it's it's like six episodes maximum something like that and that's really good and I've been really liking that and like it's been good for horror vibes but before I jumped on I thought I would talk about a new project so here's the exclusive scoop so I started yesterday I was in uh, author Angela Ann's live stream I'll link her below um and so I started plotting a new horror so this is my plan <laughs> so in traditional publishing, like when you are selling a standalone book, um, so my haunted house book, there is an option to like, you can try and do a two book deal. So you can try and sell like two standalone books or you can sell one standalone book. And then your option clause will probably be like some sort of book that goes together with the first one. And then that would be your book that you would present for option. So in this case, I'm wanting a companion book for my haunted house horror. So that when we go out on submission, there is another project that we can kind of be like push for a two book deal or that I can come back to if we sell the book and we want to present that as the option book to see if they'll buy it. So my plan for this is to do all my Save the Cat beats write a condensed synopsis because I can write a very long synopsis, but I end up changing so many things. It's better to do something condensed. So I'm hoping to do like a three to five page synopsis, something like that, and then write like the first, like the first act 
act, I think. So like the first 50 pages. Um, and I'll consider that kind of my proposal, um, if you will. And so that's my plan. So that's kind of what I'm going to be working on this week. I don't know if I'm actually going to get to the drafting or if I'm just going to be doing all of the planning. We'll see how that works out. And then next week, I think I'm going to start back in on my sequel, but I don't know. We'll see because my agent said that she's probably going to be done my horror in the next couple weeks. So like she'll probably be done around that time. So I don't know. I'll see what I want to do. But I also think I'm going to work on the horror and my sequel at the same time anyway. So it might not even matter. But <laughs> anyway, that is that whole thing. And yeah, that's kind of been it. Ooh, I'll show you. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Let's see what we can do here. There we go. I put some stickers on my laptop and these two actually came from Kevin, from Kevin the writer. Um, he has an Etsy shop. I'll link all his stuff below, but he sent me these stickers and I love them so much and they look so nice in the laptop. And then this is Apple Cheeks. This is my only Patreon that I do right now. I can only do one Patreon at a time. So I'll like, I'll like swap between them. But this is Apple Cheeks. She has a YouTube channel too. And I love her stuff. And this was the Patreon sticker. And then these two came from Canadian artists. Um, I'll link them below too, but I've always been really afraid to put stickers on my laptop. I don't know why. I guess it seems so permanent, even though you can actually take them off. And so I hadn't done it for a while, but I knew when Kevin was sending me his stickers that I wanted to put them on my laptop. So those I like put on right away. And then I've been like slowly adding, but yeah, that was kind of, my whole July was a little bit weird because I didn't do camp because I was like, I'm not going to finish my stuff like in time. And then I ended up finishing my stuff like a week or so early from camp. And then I just like took this weird week off. And yeah, it's been a whole month, but it's been really good. I've been really happy with how July went. Um, let's, let's do a TLDR. What happened here? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I finished my first draft of my sequel. I finished editing my horror book. My agent sent me a very lovely email about how much she likes the horror. So that's really exciting for me. And yeah, I'm just feeling really good in July. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's it for the vlog. I won't ramble on any longer than this. <laughs> So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. I post all about my experience um, as a traditionally published author and my projects and I do a vlog every month and that sort of thing. And if you have any comments for me, feel free to post them below. How was your July? That is a good comment prompt. What did you do in July that you're really proud of? And share that below so we can cheer each other on. And thank you again for watching. Bye.